Hi guys, welcome back to part two of this Eagle Eye Study Real Time tutorial for you guys here on YouTube. If you are seeing this part first, this is part number two and you need to go and watch part number one so you can get all of the materials, the liner and the reference photo and so you can complete the first half. So if you haven't done so, use the link in the description hop along to part number one and watch that one first but if you have watched that one and you are now here to complete your eagle eye study then this is for you and let's get straight into it so for the yellow area around the eyes what we're going to do is just add a base layer of some of the brown ochre the olive brown 10 percent sorry um, we're going to also add some green gold, some Bista, some walnut brown and of course we're going to add in this Naples yellow as well. So we're going to add these main colours and what we want to do first of all is just erase a little bit of the harsh graphite line around here. So I'm just using the larger of my erasers just to get rid of this. It's not a small area so I don't need to use the Tombow or anything. And just get rid of that graphite a little bit around the outer edge. I will just use my Tombow for this section just here, like that. I'm going to add a layer of the olive brown 10% down first. I'm pretty much just going to add this all over. So I'm just going to go into these areas here. We've just got faint, the faintest area of yellow here. It's also like very slightly green as well, so we can add a little bit of the Prussian blue on top of that. And just going around all of this. Just a really light layer, using a light pressure all the way around, just filling in that yellow cornice section. And then we have this like, I don't know what it is, but I always call it the the eyebrow because it looks like he's uh, furrowing his brow. So we're going to add a layer there as well. Now directly on top of this we're going to add some of the yellow ochre. Just initially bring that very bright yellow into the piece and this is going to really complement what's been going on in the eyes here as well so just using the was it the naples yellow and just lightly shading so i'm holding my pencil quite far back to limit the amount of pressure So we've got a nice layer of the Naples yellow around the outside there. Now there's areas where there's a little bit of a green tint, so we're going to add in that. We're going to use the earth green to go over, over to begin with. This is mainly where this yellow section meets the white feathers, just down here. So we're just going to add a really, really light layer of the earth green, just really lightly layering even lighter than before we just want a smidge of colour in there not too much you don't want it too dark if you do go too dark 
you can always use the white to bring it back up to a lighter shade. I'm just filling in this bit here as well. Then what I'm going to do is use a little bit of the green gold and fill in these darker areas of yellow off to the left hand side here. So these are more sort of richer in the yellow tone. So I'm just adding the green gold down. Still using that light pressure but going over multiple times to try and add as many layers as possible and smooth that out as much as possible. I'm also going to add the green gold into these areas along here where you've got a little bit of a darker shadow on this section here and by adding the green gold in there it's just going to increase the layers and give us a really nice base to layer some of the walnut brown on to get that darker sort of muddy brown colour. I'm just bringing a little bit of the green gold into where we've added the earth green. Then I'm going to grab the walnut brown and I'm just going to darken these bits up here. So I'm just lightly applying this. So I'm not pushing hard at all, just keeping that same light pressure. Just running this over. We just want to create a shadow up here a bit of a darker look. The same just up here, I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of walnut brown just to darken it and I'm just going back and forth and then just adding in some horizontal lines here just to create a little bit of texture so now that we've added that down we can afford to go in with a little bit more pressure down here with the Naples yellow so I'm just going in with a further layer just going in with a bit of a harder pressure I'm going to make it really nice and yellow. And I'm just going over these areas where we added the walnut brown to add this shadow as well, just to smooth them out as much as possible. And then we're going to go back to the earth green. We're just going to continue to add the green tone to the bottom half here. So this time I'm pretty much adding the earth green all over with a light layer. And then I'm going to just increase the pressure a little bit as you get more towards these white feathers where it's a little bit more shadowy. And I'll also switch to using a little bit of the Prussian blue and just add a little bit of a blue ring around the outer edge of the eye here. It's just going to help to complement that yellow. I'm also just going to add a tiny, tiny little bit into these shadowy areas to enhance that green tone because the Naples yellow and the Prussian blue mixed together create this really, really lovely tone. So just adding that down. And the top little eyebrow section here, I'm actually going to blend with a little bit of the white to try and get it nice and smooth. So I'm just going over, I'm using a fairly hard pressure here because I'm not going to need to add too many layers over this. 
just going in with a bit of a harder pressure to smooth that out as much as possible. Then I'm going to take up the Beaster pencil and I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow on the very end here and to this under, this bit under here as well. I'm going to go over that with some green gold just to add a little bit of more of a rich tone. I'm also just going to go into this shadow area with the bee star using a little bit of a harder pressure. Really cement that shadow in there. And I'm also going to use some of the warm grey 6. just to add a few distinct areas as well. And just darken this up. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of shading into the bottom section here, right where this yellow meets the little stubby feathers. And also just shade around the actual outer edge here as well, just to blend it in a little bit. There we go. So let's concentrate on some of the feathers surrounding this area. What I'm going to do is just gently erase the outline just around the very immediate area. And then I'm going to layer down some cold grey one. I'm just going to give mine a sharpen because it's quite blunt as you can see there. It's quite, quite on the blunt side so I'm just going to give my pencil a quick sharpen and then we're just going to add a base layer. And then we're going to fill in some of the darker shapes with the warm grey six. <laughs> sharp pencil now and what we're going to do is add a base layer going in the direction of the feathers so if you look at the reference photo the feathers are sort of coming down this way and on this side they're coming up slightly so that's the way in which we're going to add this base layer and you want to use a light pressure and we're just going to use shading back and forth it's a really simple method really simple technique of laying down the colour You want to make sure you've got a nice even tone. I'm also just going to add a tiny little bit of this tone off to the right hand side here just so we can fill in this dark shadow section here. With that down then we're going to go straight in with some of the warm grey 6 and we're just going to fill in all of the different shapes and everything that we can see surrounding this yellow area. So you can see various little uh, bits and bobs 
of a dark tone. You want to use a really light pressure. I'm just going to outline this little eyebrow section first. So you want to use a light hand and just go around the outer edge of that. That's so we can distinguish that between the rest of the feathers. And then we're just going to look at the shapes. Most of them are sort of long curved lines and then you've got some circles and small squares. So that's how you want to analyse this and then you're just going to fill in the shapes that you see and leave gaps in between the shapes that you can see as well. So I'm just filling in some really tiny little circles. Every now and then you'll see some of the curved lines branch and meet each other and they form certain letters. So this one that I'm looking at here is like an upside down Y. So I'm just adding that in. And to blend it into the surrounding area I am just lifting the pressure off the pencil and creating small circular motions so that you shade the surrounding area so that it doesn't stand out so much. So you've got this little shadow section which um, is underneath this little eyebrow here. We will go through and darken where necessary on a second part of this. So don't worry about getting it as dark as it needs to be to begin with. Just make sure that you're adding in the correct shapes, the correct lines in the correct places. What I've tried to do with a line art for this is pick out the darkest and more prominent features. So if you have erased your graphite and you can just see it lightly through your initial base layer, then it, well, that's what you want to do, just follow that graphite. But if you can't see your graphite, then just analyse your reference and look at it in terms of shapes. So there's like arches with little negative space in the middle of them, so then you just want to add your shapes around that negative space. And where you have large areas of solid colour, that's you just want to fill that in, but again, note the shape that it's making. Some of the shapes might not make sense, and some of the shapes might be made up of multiple shapes, but this one that I'm filling in here is like a cross shape, and it connects almost with this upside down Y. I'm sorry, I, uh, have a, I think I have a little bit of a cold coming, so I apologise if I do inadvertently sniff every now and then. I do try not to or pause the video, but sometimes the little one just gets me unawares, so I apologise for that. So just filling in the shapes, and then you'll start to see that your area starts to fill out and then you start to get some sort of texture. So once you've filled in one set of shapes, move on to the next. And just add the shading around this eye section. So you can see where you do have the lighter areas and what you want to do is just flesh those out as well. Just imagine those in terms of shape and add your darker areas around them. If you don't get it spot on it doesn't matter. You just want to get the idea that the texture is there, that this is sort of a little bit more of a stubby feather than the long feathers, the long sort of uh, more downy feathers which we're going to be adding up here. This is more of like a stubby feather just around the outside of the eye. So it doesn't matter if you don't follow it 100%, you just want to get that texture idea down. What I'm doing as well is just shading lightly into the yellow area to try and blend that in a little bit more. Now here we have a large white space but then you've got the shapes and everything which start around the outside of it so we're just going to 
leave that space blank. We will tone it when it comes to darkening all of these other areas. For now we're just going to leave it like blank like that. I'm going to just move on to adding in all of these other dark spaces. So this one is like a triangle just here off to the side of the eye. So I'm just roughly fleshing out a triangle shape, trying to match it as closely as possible and then just shading it in and then just leaving it like that. And then moving on and adding in these other lines. So I've mapped out some lines here so I'm just going over those with the cold grey six. The warm grey six sorry. And just going around this yellow section as well and just fleshing that out. So as we come down here, I'm just going to blend these out just by lifting the pressure off the pencil and just creating a really light shading around the outer edge of that. And as we come down here, we're just going to continue following these lines. Just filling in the negative space, all of these dark sections. So this is like a diamond almost with a really long tail and the tail comes all the way back up here and then comes off into like a bit of a curved arc. Again just blending it out into the surrounding area just by lifting the pressure off the pencil and just making small circular motions. And then as we come down here, these become sort of irregular circles. But all the feathers are sort of circular shape or triangular shaped down here. So this bit becomes a little bit easier. And as we come around here, it gets a lot darker. And then you just got the odd shape here and there that you just need to go around. So then we're just working around the negative space. And 
like so. And on this side over here, I'm just going to fill in this small section with some of the Naples yellow. I'm going to go over it with some of the Bista. And then we're going to go over it with some of the Warm Grey Six as well and just shade it in. So we've got this really nice dark section here. Just going to add a tiny little bit of walnut brown as well. Like so. So now what I'm going to do is go over, I'm actually going to go in with some of the dark sepia. I'm going to give it a quick sharpen so we've got a nice sharp point and I'm going to go in and just add some of the darker areas around here. So nice sharp point and we're just going to squint at the reference photo and that will make all of those darker areas jump out and those are the places where I'm initially going to add this down. So when I'm squinting at this the dark places that I'm seeing are immediately this one underneath the little eyebrow section here. So I'm just going to shade this a little bit with this darker pencil. add in the dark lines in detail and then if I squint again the next dark section is this bit just here so again I'm going to go into this section with my dark sepia I think so darken up this bit here as well the next bit is this section just here. So you can see how I'm just darkening these to begin with. And then we're going to go back in with some of the warm grey 6 and we're just going to blend everything together a lot more. Next dark section is this one just here. This is probably one of the main dark sections. So I'm just going to fill that in as well. Let me just blend it out whilst I'm here. This bit down here needs to be quite dark. This has also got a little bit of a blue tone, so we'll be adding some Prussian blue to that as well. And the last dark section, which is pretty dark as it is, but I'm just going to go over it with some of the dark sepia, is this bit. So that bit there. And then you've got a few spaces here and there down here that just need to be darkened and deepened and then just blend some of the dark sepia into the yellow here as well There we go. So what I'm going to do now is take the Prussian blue and I'm just going to go into some of these dark areas and just add a little tiny bit of a blue here. This is going to help with bringing the colours from the eye into the feathers as well. So just working a little tiny bit of this into these darker tones and just bringing it into the outer area a little bit as well, so just blending it through, just using a light pressure. There we go, and then we're going to take the 
one grows six once more and we're going to just blend everything together and darken a few of these lighter areas. So this one here needs darkening a little bit so I'm just using a light pressure to begin with. You can see how light that is and then in certain places right next to where you've got these dark lines that's where I'm going to go in with a little bit of a further layer. And then as we bring that out, just lift the pressure off the pencil so it's really, really light so it blends in really nicely. And whilst I'm doing this, I'm creating like a zigzag motion with my pencil to try and create this sort of almost mottled texture. I'm just going into the top of this yellow section and just adding a little bit of a shadow and just redefining a few of these little circular things up here as well. It's really darkening that up. There we go. Also going to add some walnut brown to the top here. And I'm also just going to add some of the yellow. into that bit. Looking perfect. I'm also going to use the beaster just to add a little bit more of a shadow to the underneath this eyebrow section there. I'm going to switch to using a little bit of the silver grey here to just fill in some of these darker, uh, these lighter sections here. And I'm just going to pretty much just add this pencil all over these lighter sections. It's going to help to blend everything together. It's going to act like the white pencil and just bring everything together. Blend it out a little bit. I'm also just going to work this into this yellow section here. Which is just going to blend all of those colours together. And I'm going to go through there with some of the juniper green just underneath here. It's really lightly add in that green tone. And this section here just needs a little bit of darkening and a little bit more of a rich tone. So I'm going to use the Beaster and then go in with the green gold. Just add a really rich tone on that back edge there and also through here. So I'm really happy with how that is looking. Now we can concentrate on filling in all of these lighter feathers. These have a really nice blue tone to them. This section just here is going to be the same kind of technique as this. This bit here um, might be a little bit tricky, a bit, a bit trickier than this bit around the edge of the eye, but we'll see how we get on. To begin with, I'm going to erase the graphite lightly, especially in this light section up the top here. So I'm just going to fill in all of this top section up to in and in line with the eyebrow just here. So all of this top section, I'm just going to erase the graphite on or lighten it as much as possible I'm going to go in there with the first layer which is going to be the cold grey one and we're just going to follow the direction of the feathers so if we're looking at this section they are sort of coming up slightly so in this direction ever so slightly and then as we come to the top they sort of come back over like this and they flow towards the back of the head in this direction. So all of the feathers are pointing this way but some of these ones at the front just come up and these ones come down slightly and then they just sort of flow back. So we need to just add a really really light base layer just following that feather pattern and we're going to go into these bits already done here.
So we've got our initial layer there. I'm going to take the silver grey from the Cavendish Luminance and also the light cobalt blue. And I'm going to give both of those a sharpen. And those are the ones we're going to be using to create the different tones and the form within the feathers up here. So I'm going to give them both a quick sharpen. So we've got a nice fine point. I'm going to start with the lighter of the two which is the silver grey and all we're going to do is just look at the reference photo and see where we have darker areas. So this is pretty easy to do and all we're going to do is just use the point of the pencil and we're just going to add shading in the direction that the feathers are going creating lines like fur but instead of um, keeping them quite spaced apart. We're going to just group them together so it's almost like shading but you're going to group them together really really closely so you just have this really nice smooth area. And we can just go over a couple times and increase the pressure where necessary. And to darken some of these even further if we're not quite getting there with the silver grey or the light cobalt blue we can just go in and use a really light layer of the warm grey 6. So I'm just going to use the warm grey 6 here just to make it nice and simple and easy. And again we're just going to use the point of the pencil and just create some fur lines or the technique that you would use to create fur lines which is just putting your pencil onto the paper and lifting as you're coming towards the direction that you're going to. So you end up with a nice tapered line and it blends in really nice and smoothly. So you end up with something really really light like this here and to blend it out if you want a nice smoother look you can just go in with the silver grey or the white and blend it out a little bit more. So I can just about see the graphite underneath where I've, you've got these little flecks of darker area as well. So I'm just going to go over the entire area just looking for the darker marks and darker areas and then just picking out all of the individual little tones with the silver grey to begin with. And then I'll come back in with some of the light cobalt blue and just add a little bit of a blue tinge to a few areas.
Once I'm happy with that, just added in a really nice light layer of that. Then I'm going to go in with the light cobalt blue. And just do exactly the same, but with a lighter pressure. Just add a blue. So following the structure of the feathers and where you've got any darker indents where the feathers are a bit more tightly packed and that kind of thing, just going in and using this cobalt blue to just identify those areas. We just add this nice cool tone to the piece as well and it complements that yellow incredibly nicely. I'm going to switch to using a little bit of the cold, the warm grey 6 and just filling in a few of the darker aspects here. So this is mainly around this little eyebrow section where you can see a few parts within the feathers and there's a little bit of a shadow tone on this little eyebrow section as well. So I'm just using the point of the pencil and going around the eyebrow here. Just using this really lightly. To add in the darker tones of the feathers here. And then every now and then you've got these little areas where you've just got a bit of a stronger stripey vibe so I'm just going through as well and just adding in those little distinguishing marks some of them are only like ever so faint you can just see the hint of them here and there so I'm just going through and just adding those in really really lightly Going to use the white pencil just to blend some of the cobalt blue and the grey together. So it's very hard to actually pick up all of the tones and texture. 
can see that my camera is actually struggling to pick up the the texture on this so I will try and alter the footage a little tiny bit so that it does pick up this a lot easier just this section I'll try and do my best to make it so that it stands out a little bit more and as I have gone through and just blended that I've noticed that some of the areas could do with being a little bit darker could be doing with a little bit more blue tone so I'm just going through with a little bit of a harder pressure on the cobalt blue and just adding that in and in one or two places I'm actually going to go through with this Prussian blue and just here and just add a little bit of a darker tone down makes it look really really nice and moody and it just complements all of the other colours used and especially within the eye it just complements it so so nicely so I'm just going to go and just add in a few little details here as well using the warm grey 6 just continuing to shade and then blending out with that white pencil So as I've added a little bit of a darker tone around some of the surrounding areas here, I can see that I need to go back into this area and just darken this up a little bit more. I'm also going to add a tiny little bit of manganese violet. I'm also just going to darken up with some more of the dark sepia. Just going to add in some more darker tones and really shade this section up here. Really blend it all in together. And where it's sat for a little while I'm just going to go into the pupil and darken that up. What I may do is go through here with a little bit of a pit pen to darken this up. In fact I think I might do that because it's just going to add that necessary element of contrast. It's going to really darken up these areas where it needs to be quite dark. So I'm going to just grab a pit pen. I'm going to use the fine uh, tip the F tip for this. I will add this to, to the materials list as it's different to what I stated at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is just go into the very outer edges and add this really dark pen section down. Just that little section for the time being. I'm going to take the dark sepia and I'm going to work into the edges of that and just blend them out so they're not as prominent. You can see the difference already in that contrast. It's so much better. I'm going to go into the pupil now. Add this to the really dark sections. You could also use a black pencil if you don't want to go in and use any pen, if you want to keep it purely coloured pencil. But this technique I've been using, and I really love using this technique to just develop all of these darker tones. It makes such a difference in the final outcome. It gives it so much more contrast. 
And the reason I like to use the pit pens here is because they are actually light fast, which is double bonus. So adding into the second half like that, and I'm just going to take the dark sepia and just blend the edges out again. And the same down here. Adding a tiny bit of the manganese violet. Also going to use a tiny bit of the white gel pen just to bring out the white highlight here. So I'm just using the Secura Jelly Roll pen and just going to go through and add this little bit of highlight here as well. And just one or two bits through the actual iris. There we go. That should bring it to life a lot more. So we've got all of the feathers on the top completed. So now we just need to turn our attention to the lower section of feathers and this part of the beak here. This bit's the tricky section, this bit's pretty much the same as how we just rendered this top section, although there are a few more dark areas on this bit down here, but that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to do exactly the same on this part down here, I'm just going to erase the graphite, so you just got a very very light outline, and then we're just going to put a base layer down of some cold grey one. A nice light outline and we're just going to shade in the direction of the feathers so the feathers are coming from the right to the left and these ones down here are pretty much just coming straight across whereas these ones as they come up around the eye are sort of just coming up a little bit so we need to make sure that we work the feathers in that kind of direction so we're just going to start from here Just shading back. So a nice base layer, then we're going to take the silver grey and we're just going to do exactly the same as what we did up here. This one um, underneath has a lot more of uh, dark tones, so we're going to be using a lot more of the silver grey and that uh, light cobalt blue as well down here. So just going to map in exactly the same type of thing, just where you've got the darker section sitting. Just using the same sort of technique, just shading back and forth and blending out into the surrounding areas, using a few of those line, um, like fur line movements as well, and strokes with the pencil. Just going over a couple times as well where it's really quite dark.
it's just getting a nice sort of darkish layer down just making this color as dark as possible and then we'll go in with some of the cobalt blue adding the same sort of blue tones as we've done here this bit down here is a bit more gray in tone so we'll be adding a lot more of the warm gray six rather than that cobalt blue but we're just going to be adding the cobalt blue so we can add uh, tie the two areas together so I'm just going to go through now and just sort of bring a few elements of this in it's mainly quite blue as we get down here and what I might do is add some of the cold grey 6 down and then once that's down we can go over and just tint the grey tone with a little bit of blue using this pencil here I'm just adding a little bit down just to darken a few areas I'm just going to switch to using some of the warm grey 6 just really gently using this and shading this down mainly using it just here in this corner just to try and get this overlap of these feathers in correctly so just using it really really lightly we can use the silver grey as well to just to blend and tone a little bit of this out in the corner here I'm going to use the silver grey in between using this warm grey 6 just to blend everything out, create a nice smooth area of colour. I'm just adding in those little feather, feather sections there. I'm going to go through with a little bit of the Prussian blue as well. just for that darker sort of blue tone that just gets it, the pigment down a lot quicker just by going in with that little bit of a darker tone and I'm going to use the dark sepia just to add in a few of these really faint dark lines this is the little feather texture just here
just adding in these tiny tiny little details and just darkening up the area around this bit of the eye here so it looks like the sort of feathers are on top and in the forefront and then you've got this section which sort of sits behind these little feathers here that's what we're trying to create just by following the patterns of the dark areas within the feathers I'm just using the dark sepia every now and then to just add in these little dark sections of these feathers. And then switching between shading with the silver grey and the light cobalt blue. It's blending everything really nicely together. And going over really lightly with some of the warm grey six. I'm just shading quite a bit down here just to try and get this quite nice and dark and just adding in that very very subtle feather texture that dark line running through a few of those Okay, so pretty much got the basics down here. I'm just going to go in and just adjust them here and there, blend some of these darker sections out a little bit. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the Prussian blue here and there as well. Just gives an extra depth to the dark areas and it really ties it into this really light blue area up here.
going to use the white pencil to just pick out a few really light areas. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of a heavy pressure and just add some singular pencil strokes down just to depict some of these overlapping feathers. And just going into some of the darker areas in between here with some of the dark sepia. Just picking out some of the real dark sections, going in between some of those areas where I just used a hard pressure on that white pencil. Just to make those white areas a lot more prominent. So he's getting there, coming along now. So what I'm going to do is just continue to darken these bits. Might even go in with a little bit of black pen into some of these areas around here just to make them stand out a lot. So I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of black pen around here in these real dark areas here. So I'm just squinting at the reference photo and picking out where the darkest areas are and then just using this pen and adding it down. Then I'm just going to blend it in with the dark sepia. Just very very subtle areas, just a little bit just there. Very subtle. It's just going to make this pop a whole lot more. So I'm just going to go in with the dark sepia and just blend that out a little bit whilst it's still slightly damp. Just to get rid of the rough edges of that pen. Like so. And I'm also just going to use this just to darken up some of these areas here. Gonna add a tiny bit of Prussian blue. And then we're ready to start this texture here and this tiny little bit of the beak. So the beak just runs just along here and there's a tiny little bit up there. So we're gonna add that in first, get that really bright bit in so then we can judge the values and everything on this bit here. So for this I'm going to go straight in with a base layer of this which is the Naples Yellow and I'm pretty much just going to add this down really lightly to begin with and just make sure that I've got the shape of the edge of the beak in here. So I'm just going to add it like that. all I'm going to do to make sure that the shape is right just zooming in a little bit on my reference picture there to make sure it's all correct it's going over a couple times to make sure that the color is really nice and vibrant I'm going to go over in a slightly different direction as well. So we've got maximum coverage down there. And then 
I'm just going to add a little bit of a base layer just here. I'm going to add a base layer of the warm grey one to this section here. So I'm just going to follow the direction. So like we did with these feathers back here, I'm going to just follow this slight direction here. So the eye comes down at a slight slant and these feathers are coming up. And then these ones are coming across and then eventually they're coming a little bit down as well. So we've got a base down there. So I'm just going to add some darker tones to this bit of the beak here so as it comes back it gets a little bit darker and where you've got a little bit of this feather overlapping it's a little bit shadowed and just a little bit darker around the edges here so I'm just going to go around the edges with some green gold. Just using a really light pressure. I'm just sort of making large circular motions to try and blend it in as much as possible. And then down here we've got a line which goes, which separates the beak like this. So we're just going to add that in slightly. Then I'm going to use the Walnut Brown to add that in even further. We're going to shade either side of that as well. So I'm going to use the Beaster just to shade around that, blend it in. I'm going to switch to the warm grey six and I'm just going to blend in this little top section of feathers just here. And I'm going to use the earth green to create a little bit of a shadow where the beak meets these feathers here. I'm just going to continue working on this shadow section. I'm going to use some Vista and layer it with some walnut brown. I'm going to grab that white pencil and just create a few little highlighted areas just by pushing quite hard on the pencil. It's also going to serve as a blender 
a blender to blend out this beak, make it really nice and smooth. I'm just going to go over with some of the yellow, really brighten up some of these areas here. I'm going to add some of the juniper green along the crease of the beak here for those shadows. Use a little bit more of the green gold to accent a few of the darker shadowy areas. And I'm also going to use a little bit of the manganese violet and some of these feathers just here. Okay, so the beak is pretty much there. Now that I've done that beak though, I can see a few areas which need uh, sorting out within this section. This needs darkening a little bit more, especially right on the lip here. So I'm going in with that beaster and then I'm gonna go in with the walnut brown. I'm gonna add a really rough shading layer and the texture of the paper is actually going to enhance the texture of that little cornice area as well. And I'm gonna also add some of the juniper green. Is it the juni juniper green? Yeah, juniper green in here. Like so. And then just darken up this bit back here with some green gold. Use the walnut brown to just add in this edging. Darken it up, make it look as if it's set back. And then I'm going to use the dark sepia just to darken it once more. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the Persian blue into the iris as well and a little bit of the juniper green just darken everything up now that we've got a few of the main features in okay so now we're ready to concentrate on this final section which is this bit here. We're going to start on this darker section up here and then do this bit here. So it's fairly simple to actually construct that. All we're going to do is just uh, follow the same pattern as what we've done for these and this little area around the outside of the eye. Just follow any shapes and that kind of thing that we can see within the reference photo. So to start with, we're just going to, as we've got our base layer down, we're just going to basically go in with some of the warm grey six, I'm also going to use some of the um, walnut brown, also a little bit of the manganese violet and we're just going to fill out what pattern we can see here. So I'm just going to give these pencils a quick sharpen, so I want a really nice sharp tip, not like what I've got here. It looks sharp but it's actually quite blunt um, when I'm actually using the, pe uh, the pencil on this paper. So I'm just going to sharpen up those three pencils. Uh, 
then I'm going to take the warm grey 6 first of all. I'm just going to start from here and just fill in a slight like line pattern coming down. So I'm just making small lines like this and then I'm going to just use the light pressure on this pencil and just blend them into the surrounding area. And you're just going to fill out the direction in which these like, little clumps of lines like this are going in. Just shading around them to blend it into the surrounding area and then just moving slowly down and just doing exactly the same thing. And as we get down to here, just slightly changing the direction of these strokes to match the direction that the feathers are actually going in. And just creating small lines and then layering them up. So starting at the bottom here and making one line going over like this. So it sort of arcs a little bit like this. Then I'm just going up a step, leaving a little bit of a gap in between them and just making exactly the same marks, leaving that space between them so I can shade and we can blend them together a little bit and then just filling in the rest. So you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this so you've got gaps in between these bits here and then it's just filled in with loads of these little lines. Now that that's done in, that's um, down, we can then darken some of these so we can just go in with a little bit of heavier pressure and the reason we're darkening some is so that we don't lose where we've put some of these when we do go in and blend all of this together. Like so. I'm going to add a very, very faint glaze of the Prussian blue and I'm going to add some of the walnut brown into this dark area here right next to the yellow and just blend this through so add it as a glaze over the top and then I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the manganese violet into this bit as well just glazing just using the side of the pencil and glazing that down and then I'm just going to use the steel or silver grey and just blend it over. So just using this like with the white pencil, just going over it, blending it all together so it all becomes like quite blurry. And then I'm just going to take the warm grey 6 and just go over and darken up a few areas, add in a few little prominent lines here and there where I can see them. like 
so I'm going to use the white pencil to pick out a few little highlighted areas so then this section here we're going to do exactly the same thing we're just going to take the warm grey 6 and we're also going to take the Beaster because this has slightly got like this yellow undertone. So we're going to start off with the warm grey six up to up to here. Then we're going to fill in the rest of this with the Beaster, and we're going to layer these two together. But this is pretty much the exact same technique as this because these are really really short feathers. So we just want to create like little bands of the grey and of the Beaster. So I'm just using these tiny little lines and just filling in where we've got the little arcs and bands. I'm just going to use a little bit of that yellow to just bring the little eye section into this bit up here and just blend it through. Just continue with the warm grey 6 and just create these little lines up here. And then I'm going to switch to the Beaster. And then just create some little patches of yellow by doing the exact same process as what we did up here, just creating these little pockets of this little darker colour. Just looking at the reference and seeing where the darker colour is poking through and then creating these lines and then going over with some of the yellow I'm going to go through with some of the juniper green And then I'm going to add some of the warm grey 6 to just darken it. So just adding in these darker lines here and there as well. Similar to what we've had going on through here, still got these little flecks of dark. I'm going to use the dark sepia just to pronounce some of these little dark areas, these little dark things a little bit more so they don't lose them. 
I'm just adding these little bits of feather in here as well. I'm going to use some of the Prussian blue just to tone up his shadowed feathers just here. I'm going to switch back to the Beaster and just go in with a bit of a heavier hand and just really get that sort of brown tone down there. And I'm also going to go in with some of the Walnut Brown. Just create this sort of rough texture just by adding in a little, a few little like wiggly lines as well, just darkening it up at the same time. really adding this dark shadow to this bit under here as well. Just really darkening this up. Adding all of that lovely shadow in. Going in with some of the juniper green as well. Just for a little bit of colour contrast and just adding this to the dark shadows just to give them a little bit more depth. And just continuing to darken this up around the eye here. Continuing to develop the darker shadows by adding some of this green. And I think we're pretty much there with this piece. So all I would need to do is just continue some of these tones and just deepen some of the shadows. And just enrich some of this yellow around the eye as well and just muddy it up a little bit because it's too too pristine in comparison to this area of the beak so I'm just trying to add as much sort of walnut light shading of walnut brown down as possible just to try and tone it down but also still try and keep that yellow tone as well I'm just using the warm grey 6 to create a sort of circular texture just by making small circular motions on this it's just going to give it a little bit more texture the same down here as well and I'm pretty happy with how that is looking there's not too many more shadows that I actually need to go through and develop and I'm loving the tones that I've got, that I've got going on here as well. So all of this blue, this green and the yellow, just they work really, really well together. And you can see uh, the kind of depth and everything that I've got within the eye. It looks really nice and glassy thanks to those 
areas of highlight there. And what I can do for the eye is also just go through with the white pencil and really smooth it out a little bit. Add a little bit more colour to it as well, just bring a little bit more life and vibrancy to some of the areas through here. bit of the manganese violet and just some more blue tones off to the side here and just through this little highlight section and there we go so if I wanted to pick out any really light feathers or anything like that then I can just go ahead and use my white gel pen or um, use a scalpel or a piece of tape to pull out some highlights I'm just adding some of this olive brown 10% down here as well onto this area here just to try and smooth it out and then just going to pick out a few details with the warm grey 6 and also just shade a little bit more blue down as well like so So I'm just going to use the white gel pen just to pull out a few white feathers and highlights if it's going to decide to work. So it's very very faint to see. I'm just pulling out a few little white highlights. Gonna get my little swatch sheet here so I can use the back to make sure the ink is flowing. There we go. So I'm really happy with how this has actually turned out. The contrast in the piece is really good. The textures we've got going on are pretty damn good as well. You've got the really, really soft, sort of almost blurry down on the top here. And then you've got all of these sort of um, sharp looking short feathers here. And then you've got obviously this sort of bumpy texture going on in his... Uh, around his eye here so I'm really pleased with how this has actually turned out and I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial I love eye studies as you guys probably are aware it's one of my favorite things to do and I love working on eye studies that are different so previously I've done the crocodile eye study and now we've worked on this eagle eye study so if you have any suggestions on future eye studies that you would like to see, um, maybe a bit more like a wild cat, like a big cat eye again, or um, a zebra eye, anything like that, absolutely anything that you have as a suggestion, please do let me know because eye studies are one of my favourite things and I do love completing them and I feel like it is... 
a really good exercise for a tutorial. That's why I keep doing them for you guys because doing different eye studies like this eagle can, uh, like with the feathers and different texture of feathers, it just expands your skills but in a small way. So let me know how you've got on with this one. If you have tried it out and you uh, want some feedback on your results or just want to show me what you've created, then don't forget to tag me on Instagram, Twitter or in my Facebook page or post in the Facebook group. And I hope to work with you guys again on another tutorial. Bye. So that is it for this real time eagle eye study tutorial. I really, really hope that you guys have enjoyed this one and that you found it useful and that you've learned some new techniques. And as I said before, if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow me over on Instagram and make sure you join my Facebook group as well so that you can post your in progress photos and your finished artwork. And if you are on Instagram, make sure that you tag me so that I see it in my notification feed. If you are interested in more real-time tutorials, I do have a couple more here on my YouTube channel, so make sure you do go and check those out if you want to draw a lion. I think I have some other ones as well, I'm not quite sure what they are, but make sure you browse my channel. And there's also time-lapse tutorials as well, as well as technique videos and all of that jazz. So if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you do so and you tick that notification bell as well, so you can be notified of all of my regular uploads. And if you are interested in having a whole whole load of tutorials at your disposal so that you can follow along whenever you want then make sure you check out my Patreon page and also my Club Puffin website page. You can access tutorials from as little as $5 a month on Patreon and £10 per month on my website as well. And not only do you get tutorials, but you get live streams with me and you also get a little welcome pack when you join as well on my website. So make sure you check out either of those if you're interested in following more real-time tutorials and I will catch you guys later. Bye.